Welcome to this Junior Cycle Higher Level Maths Revision video. Today we're going to be focusing on linear functions. The video will include basics of functions, which will look at function terminology, mapping diagrams, vertical line test, function notations, we'll then work with linear functions, and finally draw linear functions. So let's take a look at a function. So we have here a domain or an input and it creates output. A function is a rule that creates an output for a given input. In this example, the function is take an input value, so let's take two, and multiply it by three, which gives us six. So this is a mapping diagram and it represents the function that we've just been talking to, talking about. So like I said, a function is a rule that changes the domain value or an input value into a range value. We use the letter X to stand for a domain and Y to stand for the range. And this will work as we move forward into seeing them on a coordinate plane, similar to that used when we're dealing with coordinate geometry of the line. So in this case, our function can be written as y equals 3 times x, or f of x is equal to 3x. We'll talk about our function notation in a little more detail in a later slide. So let's look at the terminology in a bit more detail. The domain means the set of inputs. So the domain in this example here to the left is 3 four, five, six, and eight. They're all the inputs or what we see in the first set or the first set in our mapping diagram. The codomain then is the set of all possible outputs. So that's everything we see in the second set of our mapping diagram. That is one, sorry, zero, one, two, seven, and nine. The range is then the set of all actual outputs. So notice there on the right hand side of the mapping diagram that the value of 2, although it's there and it could be used, it is not used. So the set of actual outputs are 0, 1, 7, 9. So it is really important that you understand the subtle difference between the codomain, so the possible outputs, versus the range, which is the actual outputs. So let's take a look at a mapping diagram. So here we are given two diagrams. Both of them look quite similar. We have a diagram A and a diagram B. And it's important to note that in this diagram A, that is a function. And this is a function as each element in the domain is mapped to only one element in the range. And that's important. And our focus is on our arrows. So the arrows go one out and it will all land on a value. The second diagram, diagram B, is not a function, and the reason for it is this. Here, we have two mappings from one input. So this is not a function, as the diamond input is mapped to two different outputs. So let's take an example that might make this a bit clearer. If I put the value of three, into a formula, I shouldn't sometimes get a 1 and sometimes get a 2. I should only get one specific value. So when I sub it in, I should only get one value out. If I don't, then that is not a function. When we're dealing with function or with mapping diagrams, like in this case, you're looking out that there is only one arrow coming out of each input. So now let's talk about if the function or relation is not given to us given to us in a mapping diagram. What if we're given instead the picture or the graph? So we have what's called a vertical line test for a function. And it is, if any vertical line that is drawn intersects the graph of a relation only once, then it is a function. If this is not true, so if it does, if it intersects it, more than once, then we have a problem and it is not a function. So let's take this example here. This funny looking squiggle that you maybe don't recognize at this point and that's fine, but all we need to see is, is it a function? And the answer is yes, because there's no vertical line I can draw that will touch the graph more than once. This example here, 
this is not a function and the reason it is not a function is because when I draw this vertical line it touches or intersects the graph twice so it fails the vertical line test. This is also not a function because no matter what line I draw, I can see that there are some that will intersect this relation or graph twice. Therefore, it is not a function. Now let's talk a little bit about function notation. So the most commonly used function notation is this here. This is pronounced f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. f is the function name x there is our input and 2x plus 1 is our output or the rule for an output so if i told you x was 1 we could then use that rule to calculate our output some pieces to note f of x this is pronounced f of x it's important to get used to saying that correctly because it is not f by x or it is not multiplication it is something very specific so do you get in the habit of saying f of x f of 2 then will be f bracket 2 and f of x is another way to say y so y is what they will all be so y we think of it as our x and our y axis but f is more specific to the name so the analogy i would give is the idea that if you have girls that would be equivalent to the Y, but you wouldn't go around going girl, girl, girl. It's much easier to work with people if they have something that identifies them specifically, and that to us is our name. So I would say Mary, Anne, and so on. So F is the name. It is specifically the name. All of these functions, f of x, it could be g of x, it could be h of x, that's all names, but they are all y's. In the case, like all of these are girls. So just be really clear about that. If we want to work with a few functions, we often give them specific names like f of x, g of x, h of x, but they are all a y value. Another type of function notation you'll see is this. And this is f is the function such that x is mapped to 2x plus 1. Now, at junior cert higher level, you will see this in a form like this. But my suggestion would be to always rewrite it as our above f of x. If you were wondering why we even have this, this becomes a much useful or much more useful notation as we move into leaving cert higher level. So just like before, f is our function name, x is our input, and 2x plus 1 is our output. So my advice to you is if you see something like this, that you come along and rewrite it as f of x equals 2x plus 1. Because this is the most useful format for us, and this is going to be the one that will help us work through the questions. Example 1. Working with functions. If the function g of x equals 5x minus 9, then part a asks, find g of 4. So what's happened here is we've been initially given g of x, which is our function, and they've asked us to get g of 4. The x in the original has now been replaced by a 4, and that's what we've been asked to do. Everywhere there is an x, we will need to put in a 4. So this is g of 4 equals 5. And instead of x, so instead of this x here, we're going to substitute in a 4. Remember, we always use our brackets when we're substituting. Then we subtract 9. Tidying this up, 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract 9. And that gives us a final answer of 11. Part B. Solve g of x equals 21. So when we see the word solve, we're usually looking for a value of x or whatever the variable may be. In our case here, the variable is x. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this g of x and replace it with what we've been given in the question. I'm going to get rid of some of my lines here. Remember, g of x equals 5x minus 9. So here I have g of x, which is 5x minus 9, and that should equal 21. What we've done is we've created an equation we can now solve. 
You can use vertical balancing to solve this or the shortcut. We're going to add a nine to both sides. I will show this in full for this example. And we get 5x equals 21 plus 9, which is 30. To finish this, we divide both sides by 5, and we get a final answer of x equals 6. So let's work through a question. They've told us that the function f of x is equal to 3x plus 5. Find the value of f of 7. So we knew what f of x was. So what has happened is the x has changed to 7. So everywhere we have an x, we're substituting in 7. So we get 21 plus 5, and that gives me 26. Then they've asked us for f of k. In the exact same way, instead of x, they've given us k. So everywhere we have had an x, we sub in k. And that's as much as we can do. We should know at this point that it is not possible to add a 3k plus 5. So using your answer to be your otherwise, find a value of k for which f of k equals k. So we know f of k is 3k plus 5, and that should equal k. So this is a linear equation. Let's subtract a k from both sides. Let's subtract a 5 from both sides. And we get 2k is equal to minus 5. Divide both sides by 2, and we get k is equal to minus 5 over 2, or if you prefer, minus 2.5. So it is really important that you recognize whatever value they give you in the bracket, that is our input, and we put that exactly where the x had been. So let's talk about linear functions. So linear functions are very much linked to what you would have already covered in coordinate geometry of the line. If you've not already done so, it might be a good idea to go back over the coordinate geometry of the line video and to revise everything got to do with lines. So just like our coordinate geometry of the line, linear functions are written in the form y equals mx plus c. However, instead of y, because we're in functions, they may call that f of x. What doesn't change is that the m will stand for our slope, and the C is the y-intercept, or where the line crosses the y-axis. Remember about our slopes, we have a positive slope, which is read from left to right, and it works up. Negative slope, again, you're reading from left to right, and it goes down. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. Just a reminder that slope is a measure of how slanty a line is. So here, there is no slope. And a vertical line has what we call an undefined slope. And we'll talk about that a little bit more detail as we work in trigonometry. So here is um, a question that asks us to draw the following function in the domain. Minus 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2, where x is an element of or. And the function is y is equal to x minus 1. So one thing to, remind, to notice here is that this is linear. And the reason I say to notice this is because if you can notice that it's linear, it is going to make your life a lot easier. The reason for this is simple. If you can remember back to your geometry, when I want to draw a straight line, all that is required is two points. So when I draw a function that's not linear, and we're going to see two more examples of those, I will always want to do as many points as possible so I can effectively join the dots and see what the graph looks like. But with a linear, all I need to do is to draw two points and use my ruler to connect them. So because I've noticed that this is linear, and the reason I know that this is linear is it looks like y equals mx plus c, or in particular, this x is to the power of 1, okay? And that's how we recognize a linear, because it is an x on its own, or you can think of it as an x to the power of 1. So I'm going to create my table, but I'm only going to work with two points, and I'm going to work with both endpoints. So when x equals minus 2, so we're going to start off with our x values here. So let's take when x is minus 2 and x is 2. 
Our function is y equals x minus 1. So y is equal to minus 2 minus 1. That will give me my y value here, which is minus 3. And the last thing I'm going to write is my point. So I get minus 2 minus 3. Similarly here, y is equal to x, which is 2 minus 1, which gives me a plus 1, which gives me 2, 1. So I go to my graph and I fill these in. So I get minus 2 minus 3, which is here. And I get 2, 1, which is here. And this will allow me to then use my ruler to connect it. So I'm going to try use my ruler. Sometimes my screen doesn't like when I put my ruler down. Now, not great because I'm trying to work with my screen, but this is what we should get here. So we have y equals x minus 1. So if we hadn't noticed that that was a linear function, we could have done every value from the domain. So we could have done the point here, could have done our point here, our point here and our point here but that would have been more work than we needed to do so remember you want to work as efficiently as possible noticing that this is linear makes your life a lot easier